Hello, Jeffrey Martin here, director of the Center for the Study of Non-Symbolic Consciousness and a research professor and director of the Transformative Technology Lab at Sophia University in Palo Alto, California, the heart of Silicon Valley, where we research how seekers can become finders and how finders can become explorers so that you and everybody else can live your most powerful and purposeful life. I get asked all the time, how in the world do people get to non-duality, enlightenment, persistent mystical states, transcendental consciousness, unity states, all these different things. We have hundreds of these terms that are cataloged. I'm going to use the term persistent non-symbolic experience, or PNSE. Uh, that's our term for this. We've been looking into this for 10 years, and we've been really just trying to dig down to the absolute core. What's at the middle of all of this? Um, I say all the time that you know we all owe a huge cultural debt to the religions and the spiritual systems and the philosophies and all of the things that have carried the knowledge of PNSE to us in the present moment, but they've all added over the years their own little spins on things. And so for the last 10 years, we've really been trying to figure out what's the core of this? What's at the heart of it? And we've been very successful at that. We've developed a classification system for the different types of it. And in recent years, we've even been very successful at helping people to get there using our finders course protocol. So. Uh, we have not just experience with people who have gotten there on their own before we encountered them, but using the Finders Course protocol in our research, we've been able to actually see people before, during, and after their transition. All right, so how do people get there? Well, there are three big categories that we've identified. Um, and so the first category is through some sort of purposeful effort, right, by actually trying to get there. And so this might be spiritual, this might be um, philosophical. Um, so meditation and prayer and, you know, really rigorous thinking through things and, and whatnot. There's a lot of people that uh, have a tremendous amount of success with that. And so that's one category. The second category is some sort of self-objectification event. Now, that's a big, big phrase, right? Uh, what do I mean by that? Well, think of it this way. Let's say that you're suicidal. So right now, the razor blade is just right there at the wrist. And you're thinking to yourself, I could cut through there or I could watch this video. I could cut, video, cut, video, cut, video, right? Imagine how much you have to objectify. You have to have objectified your sense of self in order to want to kill it. That's a huge amount of objectification, right? You're literally operating on yourself You've, you've created an object out of yourself, and now you're trying to end that object. So that's what I mean, in one sense, by self-objectification. Uh, ordinarily, you're coming at the world from within you, right? And so everything is subjective. It's your subjective experience, we say. Um, but you can reach a point where something turns that around, and yourself is able to be operated on really to a, to a very great extent as, as an object. Let me give you another example. Uh, there was an amazing doctor, a very successful doctor, who got addicted to drugs and went to prison. And while in prison, license is gone, family is gone. You know, his entire life that he'd spent, his, his entire identity that he'd spent building up, gone. When that really dawned on him, there was a transition in him to non-symbolic experience, right? It's like all of a sudden out here there was... Everything that he considered himself, everything that he had built up to be himself, and it was right out here, and he was like, gone. Transition. Right? So that's another self-objectification event. So there's a lot of different ways that these can occur. Sometimes they happen with drugs. Um, uh, you know, there's just, there's just many, many different ways that that can unfold. Okay, so trying to get there, purposeful effort. And self-objectification events, what's the third one? The third one is basically the mystery category. The third one is like, nothing seems to make any sense about what happened. It just seemed to happen. It just seemed to happen out of the blue. Doesn't seem like they were doing anything meditation-y. Doesn't seem like they were doing anything that involves self-objectification type stuff. It just seemed to happen. All of a sudden, poof, something happens and they're there. That's a smaller category than the other two. Um, a surprising number of people get there from the self-objectification route. And... I think, you know, I don't think we'll know until PNSE is so widely known through the population that we can say, oh, yeah, most people get there through self-objectification, or oh, most people get there through some mystery thing, or oh, most people get there from actually trying. 
Uh, but these are the categories. These are the three categories that things seem to sort down into in terms of actually getting there. Now, we've got other videos that tell you what we think are the best ways to get there, the best methods to get there, that type of thing. So if you're looking for that information, you ought to find one of those other videos. But if you're just looking for sort of the broad classifications in terms of how people get there, that's how they get there.